In your previous lessons, you had a look at biomes and at ecosystems, so you are familiar with what those are. But where does it all start? So often the foundation for these places is the abiotic or the non-living factors in that environment. They are going to determine what plants, animals, insects, etc. are able to survive there. So the first factor that we're going to look at today is the physiographic features. It's a little bit of a weird word, but let's break it down. So when we're talking about the physio bit, we are literally talking about the physical features of the environment. And what environment are we really looking at? We're looking at the geographic things. So ge geography is really what we're going to be looking at. And you might say, well, what in the world has this got to do with biology? But by the end of this lesson, you will definitely know what the influences are. Right, so the first thing that we're going to look at is altitude. And altitude gets its frame of reference from sea level. And altitude is really talking about the height above sea level at which a particular ecosystem or biome occurs. So obviously down at sea level, we're going to say that the altitude is low and high up on a mountain, we're going to say that the altitude is high. And this is really going to have quite an influence, particularly with something like temperature. We will have a look at temperature a little bit later on in another lesson. But the general rule is, is that at low altitudes, your temperatures are higher. And as you increase in altitude, the temperature actually ends up falling. And uh, it can be as much as one degree Celsius for every 100 meters that you go up in altitude. A great African example of this is Mount Kilimanjaro. Mount Kilimanjaro is found in, Ken uh, sorry, in Tanzania. It lies along the equator, which you should know is normally a very hot place. But doesn't matter what time of year it is, whether it's winter or summer. Mount Kilimanjaro is always covered in snow at the top. Here's a really cool photographs of some people who have summited Mount Kilimanjaro. Um, and you can see that they are all bundled up in their warm, warm clothes because it is so absolutely freezing cold up there due to the high altitude, which enables that snow to be a permanent feature even in the midsummer months. If we take a look at the temperatures, you can see that even in winter, your maximum temperature um, is around, is in the mid 20s. And more importantly, if we look at the minimums, the minimum temperature doesn't even get anywhere close to zero degrees Celsius, which is what we would be expecting for snow to form. And so even though the temperatures at the equator in Tanzania are pretty warm, even during the winter months, uh, due to the altitude, a high altitude means that we've got a low enough temperature for snow to be a permanent feature on Mount Kilimanjaro. And that is obviously going to ex um, affect the types of plants and animals that can grow as you're going up the mountain. The next thing that we're going to look at is aspect. And aspect has got to do with the direct direction that the ground faces relative to the sun. So the, the first most important one that we're going to look at is the influence of whether we have a north facing or a south facing slope. Um, so in the southern hemisphere, the sun comes in at an angle uh, because we are kind of below the equator. And because of that, your north facing slopes get quite a lot of sun, but your south facing slopes are in the shade. And uh, that's obviously once again going to affect the temperature. So you're going to get cooler temperatures on the southern sides of the slopes and your temperatures on the northern sides of the slopes are going to be higher. So again, the plants and animals that you are going to find there are totally affected by uh, whether 
the slope is north facing or whether the slope is south facing and you need to know that in the southern hemisphere the north facing slopes get more sun and the south facing slopes get less sunlight and that is going to have a whole effect on the ecosystem. Please also just take note that in the northern hemisphere this is reversed but you don't need to know about that uh, because we live in the southern hemisphere. Uh, another interesting thing is whether a slope faces east or west. So you know that the sun rises in the east, so an east facing slope is going to get sun in the morning. So on the east slopes you're going to get sun in the morning but shade in the afternoon. And on the west slopes because the sun sets in the west you're going to get a lot of afternoon sunshine so they're going to be really hot in the afternoon and that's going to also have an influence on what plants and animals are going to want to live there has less of an influence than the north or the south slope um, but it certainly does play a role and then finally we've been speaking about slopes so let's take a look at slopes so a slope can either be gentle or a slope can be fairly steep and whether a slope is gentle or whether a slope is steep is going to influence a number of things. So first of all, if we have rainfall on a gentle slope, a lot of that water is going to soak into the ground and be available for plants and any animals that live in the soil. And just a little bit is going to run off. If we have a steep slope and it rains, the majority of the water is going to run down the steep slope um, and very little water is actually able to infiltrate into the ground to be available for plants or soil animals. The other issue is, is that with the gentle rain, this top layer of soil over here does not end up getting affected terribly much. It doesn't get washed away because the slope, slope is very gentle. Whereas on a steep slope, you're going to have lots and lots of your topsoil getting washed away. And so the layer of soil here is going to be really thin. Whereas on a gentle slope, you're going to end up having a much thicker layer of soil which is able to support life and that is going to influence uh, the biotic factors that are able to occur there. Right, so as I was saying, um, you guys are going to do the water cycle in a later lesson, and what you're going to see here is that if you have an indentation in the land, um, it is going to be able to collect all this runoff that is running down the steep slope, and that is going to be able to form a lake or a dam. Um, so on your steep slopes, you're going to have a lot of runoff. Whereas on the top of the slope or on a gentle slope like this, you're going to have the water soaking in and we call that infiltration. And that is able to feed the roots of the plants that are growing in the soil. And in fact, some of it is even going to soak further in and become part of the water table which you're going to learn about in the water cycle which is really important. You can see that these physical geographic features of the actual physical land do play a really big role in uh, how other abiotic factors uh, influence the environment and will determine what uh, living organisms are able to grow in that ecosystem.